And on today's program, my God, it's back to Franchise Town. We're talking Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Chris Gavin. Eric Siska. And we hate movies. <laughs> We all go a little mad sometimes. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? Sometimes. That is better. Zombies have entered the building. They're at the door. They're coming in. It is time to keep your appointment with the Wicker Man. They're coming to get you, Barbara. He's sick. Seen one too many movies. Now, say it! Don't you blame the movies! Movies don't create psychos! Movies make psychos for creative! What the fuck are you an excellent day for an exorcism. Hello, everyone. Welcome to We Hate Movies on the Sideshow Network. Thank you for tuning in to our fine, spooky little program. That's right. The Halloween Spooktacular chugs along as we go back to Haddonfield. I would rather chug anything than watch this movie. <laughs> rat poison? Would you Maybe, rather chug that, rat that, poison? That sounds very nice. Perfect. That now, sounds tasty. You know, some men call this a curse. I call it a gift. Oh, is it? <laughs> Chugging rat poison? No, the M- Michael Myers. Oh, 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 oh. I- immortality of murder. <laughs> Immortality of a Murderer? That's yes. going to be your autobiography. I mean, that's going to be my Netflix Netflix series of how I did it. <laughs> I kind of like this. But yeah, if, I, if I did it. Oh, yeah. That's yes. how I did it. Of course. It. You built like a Canadian hockey player. You're doomed to walk the earth. You kill like six people every five years. Just like an average Canadian hockey player. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a bad gig. What is, what is he doing between sh- between Halloweens? You think That's sleeping? Real, yeah. yeah, or working at a gas station? Oh, that explains it. There was actually a, a <laughs> explains a, that jumpsuit. A draft of this movie, or what, a proposal for this movie, was started out with Michael Myers being homeless. Yes, and that's a Scott he, Spiegel. He had like hitch his way to Haddonfield just to, to I make like it that on, way yeah. more. Absolutely, but Such an isn't answer. that pretty much how that fourth movie starts? With they do like the Frankenstein nod and like that blind guy's taken care of. Him? Oh right, yeah. I don't know what that's, that's about. Isn't that the beginning of fifth? That's the fifth. Oh, Wait, it's, it's one of them. Their sequels in the middle. Yeah, is that Maniac Cop two? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of homeless serial killers out yes, there. As it turns out. Uh, yeah, I don't. You know. Homeless Michael Myers? I feel like it's been done. Maybe that's why they threw the <laughs> script across the table. Uh, this is, for those of you who don't know, this is the, 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 the one from 1995, directed by Joe Chappelle, uh, who is a director that, you know, classic case of someone you want taking on a franchise, a guy who was quoted as saying he didn't like these movies. Oh, cool. So hire that fucker on to hire the ne- uh, to direct the next one. But I get the money. Yeah, I all- get all the money to what make it the die? Phantoms. Oh, yeah, he directed <laughs> Phantoms after this. Nice. Yikes. He broke Ben Affleck. Well, not really, but... Broke his back? Oh, that was so. Bane. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, this is also the one that's like, I feel like... Uh, 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 buried in the most lore, almost because this was like the disastrous one where like the director was fighting with the Ugh. producers. And if you get the Halloween box set, which I got on Blu-ray, baby, <laughs> uh, you get the two cuts of the movie: the theatrical cut, which is what we'll be talking about tonight, uh, but then also there's the producer's cut, which you know we'll touch on here and there. I literally watched these back to back. You watched uh, both of them? Yeah, I watched both of them. And it's, now the it's, producers uh, is better, right? It's weird. Each one of them, uh, both of them, does certain things better than the other one does. Like, the, the, the theatrical cut is way more gory. Yeah. The producer's cut, all that stuff's cut out. The ending of the producer's cut... It's more artistic. Yeah. That's one yes. word. To, to, it's to just like a there. Terrence Malick movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tree of <laughs> Death. <laughs> Uh, no, I would love to see Terrence Malick do a Halloween movie. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, that would be pretty great. Right? The camera's just floating around Michael Myers. It would be awesome. <laughs> exactly. You could sh- show him like an aerial shot of him digging in garbage and then <laughs> bringing it back to the hobo <laughs> stuff. Then you have the slightly pretentious voiceover saying, <laughs> that does sound as narrated by Brad Pitt or Kate Blanchett, depending yes. upon which version you yes, watch. You oh, the IMAX version. As uh, narrated by Brad Garrett. 
a Michael Myers. Oh, no, Michael. Look out. It's Dr. Loomis. <laughs> and then it cuts to like a murderous ape in the jungle a thousand years ago. Just yeah. Bashing another ape's a skull mm-hmm. in. Dude, mm-hmm. if there was a Halloween sequel that flashed back to like the Paleolithic era, bravo. That's, That's a real risk. That's a real risk. That's and, real the, risk. and the rune of of thorn oh, is just like yeah. exposed in the primordial ooze. Yes, dude, the start of evil itself. Mm-hmm. That's your opening shot, by the way. Right, the, the, mm-hmm. you know that thing that everyone like, everyone talks about—the fish that gets legs and walks out. Uh-huh. It like steps over the rune, and then it's, it's like original sin. It wasn't the biting of the apple by Eve. It was it the was, stepping on the rune, exactly. and, and then he gets a bleached out uh, William Shatner mask, which would be yep. in the Paleolithic yes. era. I got to tell you, by the, this is the sixth movie in this franchise. This mask is looking cheap. It's, I mean, they, you I, know, I kind of like. I it. like the mask as well. Yeah, it's, it's a, at it's a, a point it's, where it's they, a loose fit. It's a loose fit. It's, <laughs> it's, it's loose it's, fitting, which I don't appreciate. It's 1995. We want to be comfortable. While Why does he have fucking Jinko jeans on then? Too, <laughs> it's a Jinko mask. It, it if, looks terrible. I would like to see Jinko jeans. Jinko jeans and Echo, like, big puffy jacket. It is like if you went into a Halloween store now and you were like, I want to be Michael Myers for Halloween. Like, the fucking costume designer did that. They bought a knockoff fucking Michael Myers Halloween costume, and that's what's in a motion picture. To to be fair, for some god-awful reason, most of these movies decide that everyone around Halloween wants to wear a Michael Myers mask and they sell them in stores in the place where he was from murdering yeah. people. It well, was- you know, when that's listen, when it's what your town is known for, dude. I mean, the is towns it- around Roswell, there, there's UFO stuff all over the place. That's true. Now, Steve would know better than I. Where where is Dahmer's epicenter? Do they and do they sell masks? <laughs> they don't sell Dahmer masks. Okay, do what about Ed He's Dean? in Milwaukee, I believe. Do right? they sell Dahmer dick jars? <laughs> I was going to say, do they sell Dahmer chocolates? <laughs> so, oh, yes, chocolate rabbits. <laughs> I'm sure chocolate somebody Easter does. You can go on the Etsy shop. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a gross Etsy shop. I don't want to shop on. It's got raspberry cam in it because it's like blood. Did you say raspberry cum? <laughs> No, it sounded. You were trying to say jam, but I think you said cam. I, I think you just got cum on the brain. Nah. <laughs> so that's most days. This movie, the theatrical cut. Anyways, yes. I don't know what goes all on in the beginning of the producer's cut. Mostly pornography. Uh, we open Ooh. on uh, uh, Jamie, who's been the protagonist of four and five. Yeah, uh, she's like forty nine years old now. <laughs> we're in like an alternate two thousand fourteen. I mean, yeah, it's like when um, what was it? Tommy Jarvis ages up in those Friday yes. the Thirteenth. Because in the last film, she's nine, and yeah. we're told that six years have passed, which makes her 15. And you're just talking about a pregnant 15-year-old in this movie. But the uh, actress is clearly like 28 or something. The, oh, she looks the, like the lead singer of the Cranberries. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween, Halloween. <laughs> the two, uh, two things Haddonfield is known for. Haddonfield. My- <laughs> Michael Myers and teen pregnancy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, big time. She's dude. like giving birth in some sort of a castle in Illinois, I guess. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, maybe it's that one in Indiana we discovered, right? Isn't there one oh, in Indiana? It, around nearby? South Bend? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Larry Bird's? <laughs> Larry Bird's castle. The, I think it's, um, I think that this is actually uh, the, the Smith's Grove. It's the basement of Smith's Grove, yeah, which it shit. makes more sense in the producer's cut, but you know what? Who cares? So she gives she gives birth. Uh, you don't know who she is because they don't. Get, that, that's that's the, the birth. That's it. I'm doing the special sound effects for this. And there's like some sort of a cult going on, and yeah. th- some nurse lets her go. Like she's supposed to be locked up or something. And, and then, this nurse wasn't screened by the cult, obviously. Yeah, Look at yeah. this turncoat. You but also, you're making check. you're making the pack to die right there. Oh, like, <laughs> guaranteed. Like, come on, Michael. I'm here for you. <laughs> And she just gets... She, the first death of the movie is pretty good. A spike is just... It protruded her head. She kind of goes... Yeah, yeah, but this is... It's obnoxious because this whole movie is filled with nods to the first one. Uh-huh. And this is what we're doing. She oh, yeah. pins oh. this chick to the wall and then he does like the head but, tilt. Uh-huh. Fuck you. I saw that first fucking movie. Don't make me wish I was watching it. I yeah. feel like the first time he does it, it's like, oh, the, the magic and the awe of violence. But now he's just kind of being a mean girl. Like, aww. That's Sorry. exactly right. It's overkill, no <laughs> <Yeah>. pun intended. <laughs> oh, you intended that. Yeah, I intended the shit out <laughs> of it. it. 
So, yeah, that nurse is dead, and this woman breaks out and steals a professional wrestler's truck. You see this guy? Interesting fact about this guy. This, it's a nothing role where this guy is like, hey, what are you doing to my truck? Oh, yeah. Hey, what are you doing to my truck? <laughs> and then he gets murdered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This dude uh, plays a uh, uh, attempting to reform pedophile in the newly under siege The Birth of a Nation. Oh, Ooh, total really? weird IMDb find. Well, I'm glad yeah. they got a veteran actor in there. <laughs> <laughs> what I appreciate about Michael Myers over Jason and Freddy and all the rest sure. uh, is that he is in a couple of these movies driving cars all over the place. <laughs> he's, he's, he's an a accomplished driver. Yeah. He's got a license to drive. He does, dude. He steals a truck and he's like chasing her down. They wisely always kind of pan out when Michael's behind the wheel. Like, you don't want to get too close to a bare knuckle like Myers chase. Well, that's why, I mean, the fifth one, which I think is just barely better than this one. I think this is the bottom of the barrel. cube's length better. But (laughs) it's only for this scene. Is that he's driving a car, but he has to not murder someone who's sitting next to him because he has another mask on, and she thinks it's somebody else. Oh right, yeah. Oh wait, wait. Why doesn't he just take it off? Are you are you saying that he has two masks in this movie? Yes, not in this movie. In, in the, the fifth la- movie. Okay, the la- oh, in the last oh, movie. oh, 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 oh. Uh, well, I see. What's what's her name? Tina. Or Tina. T- Tina's got a boyfriend named Michael. Who he kills? Yes, and he puts oh, on that's his right. Halloween that's costume, right. and he's driving all over the place. You're right. He even stops for so you can get a pack of cigarettes. Just, you, must, you, have, you have to think of the guy is just sitting there like, "Fuck, man, I just want to kill this bitch." Well, exactly. <laughs> I mean, let's 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 pump the brakes and think about that for a second. Someone turns to Michael Myers and says. Oh, stop at that gas station. I want to buy a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> and, and he, he does under, it. He understand. <laughs> this is why I wish he wasn't supernatural. Just make him like a crazed killer, you know, just make him a mental case. Yeah. Right. Like Jason doesn't drive, doesn't talk, <laughs> you know. Just well, he's walks. a baby man. Exactly. The, the, I want my supernatural killers to be baby men. I feel like that, you know, Michael Myers is more than just the, the strong, silent type. I'm sure he's got a really interesting journal somewhere that mm. no one's allowed to read. Do you th- what, what's the penmanship situation? Is it a, or is it a live journal? <laughs> and is it locked? It is 1995. He probably <laughs> has a live journal that is locked. <laughs> well, I don't know if that launched yet. I don't know. I'm not, maybe. Uh, no, maybe. I, I he's got a GeoCities site. <laughs> oh, with, no. oh, instead of a visitor count, he's got a kill count. <laughs> no, the kill count is at like 60-something, and the visitor count's at like three. And he's got enough in his brain to know, put that under construction gif up there. Because <laughs> he's a smart killer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So he, she gets away... Um, she's like, ble- I, I mean, also she'd be dead. This baby would be dead. Like you can't oh, just yeah. start running around right after a fucking live no, birth. No. You know, from what I know about pregnancy <laughs> oh, really? and giving birth. Yeah. You can't be running, running away from a madman. I'm sure it's happened. Oh, maybe a couple times. She goes, I, I bet it happened today. <laughs> she goes to a bus station and calls into a radio show. <laughs> Now this is this is really stupid. So, but this is a spooky radio show. They're talking about scary things. Well, right? it's like a how it's a Howard Stern shock jock type thing. They Barry tried to get Sims, Stern, by the way. They Barry tried Sims. to get Stern to play this character. Really? And turn it down. Yeah. I wish Did I they... had video evidence of him saying, "You're so fucking stupid." What? Yeah, <laughs> they should have went to Art Bell then. Oh God, West Art of Bell. the Rockies, you're on the air. Is that dude dead? Coast to coast AM. No. Oh really? No, he's alive. Did they try to get Imus? That's what he wants you to think. No, they didn't <laughs> ask Imus. I am uh, Michael Myers. <laughs> Wait, is that you or is that Imus? <laughs> That's anybody. <laughs> it's probably my Imus. What's it's awesome about Imus. this radio show, though, is at the moment in the movie, we've already also been introduced to Paul Rudd, Donald Pleasance, uh, this woman in, in the car, uh, and then the woman in the bus station, where they also, everybody has this radio show on. Paul Rudd's got it on. Donald Pleasance has it on. She's got it on in the truck she steals. And the bus station oh, is Oh, Barry, are you going to ask her to take her top off? Oh, Barry, look at that toilet flush. <laughs> oh, Barry, you're going to get that in-studio guest to sit on the Sibian again, aren't you? Oh, no, an Asian guest on the show. Better play the long duck dong drop. <laughs> oh, I love when that happens. Barry, talk about your farts and shits. <laughs> Barry, I do love it when you talk about your little penis. <laughs> and all of your friends 
Habba Dewey, <laughs> slow voiced Eric, and the rest. Oh, Bear, you cannot sexually satisfy your wife, can you? Oh, Tony the Pun Man is here. <laughs> He's famously cheap. <laughs> Johnny the limo driver. Oh, your cast of characters, Barry. This is, it's, it, 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 these are like the boogeymen. This is worse than Michael Myers. The four is. boogeymen of the apocalypse. <laughs> so they're all listening. Uh, Everyone, but the biggest one is why is the bus station playing this over the PA? Typing it through. Well, and she doesn't. She does she like try to call the cops? No, she, she immediately calls this radio station, which is one eight hundred. You suck, by the way. In case you're oh man, boy, oh, 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 oh. Mm-hmm. Boner watch. And he's doing, the guy's doing a bit about Michael Myers. He's like, oh, it's Halloween coming up. Blah, 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 you know, and like, that's what he's saying. Because he's like making an appearance in Haddonfield on Halloween. We learn that Haddonfield has banned Halloween since the last movie <sighs> after what we are told Michael Myers, the girl Jamie, and as this dude puts it, and about 12 cops blew up in a police station. It's a foot Lucian move. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. Quite foot loosey. Reverend uh, John Lithgow showed up and banned <laughs> Halloween. I mean, do they think that he won't show up? If there's no Halloween. Yeah, I don't. I mean, by the way, he's like wh- walking. Oh, I was going to say walking up to town, but he's driving up to town. <laughs> he's driving right into town, and he sees like a sign that says Halloween canceled. <laughs> oh, I guess I'll go kill someone else. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll drive down to Crystal Lake see what they're up to. I'll just go anywhere else. I want to know the. Lo- <laughs> I want to know the logistics of banning Halloween, though. Seriously, like, what if you go out in a costume on Halloween? Am I getting a ticket? Yeah, you're probably getting a ticket. Are you allowed to watch horror movies in your house? Yeah, can you keep Halloween in your house? Yes, it has to. Wait, now in Footloose, were you able to dance in your house? That's a great question. I think they were talking about getting you know live cams in the homes. Oh Jesus! What what a police state they were establishing (laughs) in Footloose. uh, Halloween resurrection, you're talking about (laughs) Footloose resurrection. (laughs) That's what they should have called that new movie. By the way, John Lithgow comes back from the dead because you know that (laughs) asshole died soon after his his heart warmed at the end of that movie, right? He allowed it in the end. Yeah, yeah, he does. He turns it all around. Dancing prob- is allowed again. He does like a little shimmy, I think, at the end, too. <laughs> oh, Christ. And then he died in a dancing accident. <laughs> he entered a dance contest like the Fonz, and he just died of exhaustion. And now he has been he comes back to life, and he, he kills people in, in a house. Once, just because, once you know, they're doing foot- the Charleston in the bedroom. <laughs> every year on the anniversary of Footloose, he kills people. So she makes this call into the radio station, and she's like, Hey, they're coming. Michael Myers is trying to kill me. Dr. Loomis, if you're out there. And I'm like, thank God this old Englishman is in his countryside cabin listening to this shock jocks radio show so he can hear the the cry for help. Right. Well, yeah. she's dead. <laughs> oh, I hope she has an orgasm on the air. <laughs> that, that isn't a hot dog. <laughs> I can't hear you, sweetheart. Your top is still on. Oh, <laughs> up next, George Takei. I do love him. That isn't a hot dog. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so um, Dr. Loomis, by the way, is uh, thankfully retired, he says. Uh, a, gu- yeah. a guy comes up to him, an old friend of his, Dr. Wynn. That's a character from the first movie, not played by Whoa, this dude. Really? Oh, okay, that's the guy he's chewing out? That, yes. yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. And this character actor's been in a ton Mitch of stuff. Mitch Ryan. Yeah, Mitch Ryan everywhere. He's in Lethal Weapon. Uh, I believe in... he was the dad on Dharma and Greg. He is, but... I, is he Greg's father or Dharma's yeah, he's father? He's Greg's, Greg's father. father. Uh, yeah, he's also uh, the guy from uh, Judge Dredd, the, 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 the whistleblower, uh, what do you call it, newspaper? Oh, Vargas guy? Hammond. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Are you close personal friends with, with what's his name, Mitch Ryan? <laughs> Mitch yeah. Ryan, Mitchell Ryan, yeah. I think it's Chris's uncle, <laughs> Uncle Mitch. I always wondered where all your money came from. Now I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I that's mean, Mitch Ryan money talking. <laughs> that's Dharma and Greg money that bought me that CD once. All those DVD sales. Do you think Dharma and Greg are changing around the dial late at night and see Seinfeld on, and it's just like, could have been Dharma and Greg? <laughs> <laughs> the actual Dharma and Greg, you're asking? So Jenna Elfman and other guy. The actors, not the fictional <laughs> characters, <laughs> watching. That like, would be a that hell be, of a meta moment. Wouldn't that be eerie, right? Like yes. you're, you're you're watching TV and suddenly you're on there with your your pals chumming around, and you're like, wait a second. It's kind of <laughs> like Enemy. Oh yes. <laughs> 
Uh, is that that Jake Gyllenhaal movie? Yeah, yeah that's a weird, I did not watch. It's a it's weird so one. It's a weird one. Weird. Weird, wild stuff. So Wynn comes up to him and he's like, hey, we need you to come back to Smith's Grove. And I'm like, what, as a janitor? Because this guy is not an accomplished fucking therapist. All right. Who, Dr. Quick. Loomis? Yeah, Dr. Loomis. Dr. Loomis is, Loomis is not. He's a, he's he's a, a witch he's doctor, doctor, practically. He, he's a fucking failure. <laughs> he, he is a, he's a A-plus failure. In his sessions, he's used the word evil <laughs> dozens of times. He's that a, that kicks you right out. He's a B-minus monster hunter, <laughs> but like an F <laughs> as, an, as like, a medical doctor. Dr. Loomis is Kolchak's <laughs> understudy that... <laughs> That got his walking papers and decided to become a shrink. Oh boy, Kolchak sick. Now I can go hunt Jack the Ripper tonight. <laughs> and then he botches it. Oh, he, he would totally bungle it, dude. Uh, so I'm gonna try to not do this as as often as I could, Uh-oh. but cross into the alternate universe of the producer's cut. Doctor Wynn comes and he tells him that he himself is retiring oh, from okay. Smith's Grove, and he has chosen Dr. Loomis to be his successor, and he's trying to get him to come back. And I'm like, okay, but there's all that stuff where Donald Pleasance is talking about how they, like, fucking forced him to retire and all this. I'm like, yeah. what are you doing? So you're asking a retired man to take the job because you're retiring. <laughs> a retired <laughs> failure. Yes. <laughs> well, they wanted someone older for the job. <laughs> Is there no one working there? Like, shouldn't this go to someone below? Dude, when, when we go to Smith's Grove in this movie, I count three people working there. Wynn, Wynn's secretary, and then Dr. Loomis, who hasn't quite signed on for the job so, yet. So, no, is it Loomis's fault that Michael Myers keeps getting out and killing people, or is it budget cuts? <laughs> <laughs> it's an underfunded institution. I think it is. Well, I think, to be fair, he's he only broke out the one time. No, he, he breaks out again in, I think, four. He's back there. Uh, oh, is he? Back oh, out. Okay. Four, no, because four, he's getting, like rehabilitated and they break, yeah. the ambulance thing happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's in a halfway house. He's got a good job. <laughs> <laughs> he's got parole meetings. But then, like, Trying yeah. to meet a pretty girl. One day at a time. <laughs> and then just somebody puts a scary uh, a, a ghost in a Rite Aid window and he's like, oh no, it's that time of year again. Yep. It begins! <laughs> that um, would be great. Michael Myers <laughs> Reform Academy. <laughs> The Curse of Thorn. Just Actually, that would be out. awesome. The movie is like, you th- you assume it's Michael Myers the whole time. Then it turns out it was some other dude trying mm. to frame him. And he's like, see, I am getting my life on track. <laughs> I told awesome. you, Priscilla, I gave it up. I gave it all up. <laughs> gave up the killing. This is this is my new wife, Priscilla. She used to write me letters in jail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm his biggest fan. <laughs> Nice to meet you, Priscilla. <laughs> I'm Ed Bradley. Let's do this. <laughs> so, I don't know. We cut to Tommy. Jar- I almost said Tommy Jarvis. Kind of same character. Tommy, whatever his name is. Tommy, Tommy Doyle. Doyle. Tommy Doyle. From the first movie, of course. Who yeah. was played by Pauline Rudd. Paul Rudd. Paul or as he's Stephen Rudd. Paul Stephen Rudd. Yeah, his first, is it really? His Paul first Stephen movie. P.S. Rudd. Clueless winds up coming out first. This was his first movie. And wow. introducing, they say. Yeah, even. yeah, yeah. It is weird because I find Paul Rudd to be awesome and constantly hilarious. So it's really hard for me to take him seriously in this movie. And he's trying to be like, I'm half convinced he's trying to do a Vincent Price impression through a Ooh, lot of this movie. That's a good, interesting point. He's smiling <laughs> a lot more than he should be. Well, because he's trying to play it as like he's kind of skittish and crazy and you don't really know but, what he's up to. Like at the end, spoiler alert, when he kills Michael Myers, right. figure that one out. Yeah, well, it depends he, on the cut you watch. He just like looks at the body and is like as if it's an unwrapped Christmas present that he's going to get to open in like... Three hours. Well, yeah. you know, this is this is supposed to be a character who's been like following this since like he was attacked by Michael Myers in the oh, first movie, right? Because he's he was the baby that was babysat by yeah, Lori Lee Curtis. Curtis. Yeah, that's he's right. He's kind of a, uh, a Boo Radley type, like the, the creepy guy in the window. He's right. very Boo Radley. Yeah. So he lives across. Oh, he's another... a lawyer, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah, a little, a little bit of a peeper. A he's peeper. got a he's got a camera at this house, man. Uh, at the Strode Dude, house. It, it was the 90s, man. It's just what you, you, you wore baggy tie-dye and you filmed girls. <laughs> <laughs> 
snapped some pics. You watched a lot of <laughs> Beavis and Butthead. Oh, God. Yeah, that's coming up, isn't it? Yeah, sure is. Uh, the Strode House, it's a different family. It's like the Strode's brother or something. This is like a bad TV spinoff. Yeah. This is this is like <laughs> they're distant relatives it's of like the Strode. Family Stro- Matters of Halloween. <laughs> The distant relatives of the Strodes inherited the house on the condition that they could live in it for like a year or so. Yeah, and they don't tell anybody. Well, it's like nobody I th- knows. I think the li- I think the dad is the brother of the people who adopted Jamie Lee Curtis's character. Sure, sure. I think that's what it's supposed to be. But that's fine. Like he's the only one that knows, and like his brother's like, ah, it's a fine house. Nothing, you know, so- stuff happened. You know, stuff happens in every house. Well, every house has a story, Chuck. Just get in there. <laughs> a seven foot tall. Uh... <laughs> just get a broom, a little mop, and it'll just be fine. You're using a broom to clean up blood. <laughs> It'll work. Just try it. Just try it. It'll work. But no, I mean, like, I feel like if you live in fucking Haddonfield, where they're out long Halloween, yeah. and you know which house you're living in, because later on everyone's like, this is the Myers house, so nobody well, told it me. It makes no sense. Why are they nobody all surprised? Told me. There are kids that put up, like, a, like a, a, God, like a cardboard cutout of Michael Myers in front of his yard at the start of the movie. But that's and the well, the dad knows. The yes. dad's in oh, on it, yeah, so he's he like knows. taking it down before the family can see it. You know, how this, long do you think he could keep that under wraps? Though, uh, you know, I think he thinks quite a long time. I this guy's a bit he's of an a bully. idiot. Well, he's a big idiot. He's like a C grade Biff Tannen. This There's guy. a kid <laughs> in elementary school in your house. People are telling him. I'm yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The second that kid goes to school, oh, you fucking live in the haunted murder house. That's cool. Because, yeah, it's it's him, his wife, uh, his daughter, who has a young son. I guess she's come back at a teenage son named, like, Tony or something. Tim. Tim. Okay. And this teenage son, this is a real fucking... Uh What's the uh, what's the character on The Simpsons there? Oh, uh, uh, Roy. Roy. He's a real Roy. Like, hey, Roy, this dude's like, oh, uh, tubular, Mr. S. You know what he doesn't? You know it's not t- so tubular about this guy? He just watches his sister get beat up at the breakfast table and doesn't do shit. Dude, oh, yeah. gives, what the fuck? He gives a, hey, get your hands mm. off. He's like, got it, Tim. And like, yeah. nothing. You stay out. Because it's kind of a, a, a like uh, Eric, your favorite scene in a history of violence, where like they're sitting down with Naomi Watts, and it's like, well, that's why your baby die inside you, you know, like a, like the dad's being really shitty to her. Eastern promises. Eastern promises. I apologize. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. It's it's a it's a, it's a get touching, the, touching moment. She's saying, get, like, get. Uh, I don't want you here. Yep. Get the fuck out of here with your stupid bastard child. Dude, and he's this just like trying to eat, eat cereal, dude. He's a little baby kid. Yeah, and this dad is aggravated for like seemingly. <sighs> it's one of those like, oh yeah, don't talk to your family for five years. Then you come crawling back and you expect us to roll out the red carpet. It's like, dude. <laughs> Just shut the fuck up and drink your coffee and Lighty go to work. Da, you have family. He calls his grandson a bastard, like, right in front of him. Mm. It's like, oh, man, I cannot wait for inevitably when Michael Myers murders this guy. But well, setting up one of many plot lines that just gets dropped like a fucking bad habit, this kid, after, after his mother gets slapped in the face... Put, takes a knife to this guy's stomach and is about to cut him up like a goose. Mm. And you're like, oh, this kid's a bit creepy. Like, you know, maybe the Myers curse something, something. Oh. Well, pro- producers cut cut in here again. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you, so to backtrack like one scene earlier, like that previous night, the little kid hears a voice like, you know, kill for him. Yeah. Tommy or whatever right. his name is. Danny. I think. Danny. Yeah. Kill for him, Danny. And he wakes up and he's like, mommy, the talking man's here. In the producer's cut, he hears that again. Oh, okay. Kill for him, Danny. Like, out of nowhere. Oh, okay. Which they don't explain in this movie. And talk about dropping shit. This, like, voice that he hears. Yeah, it's just there. So then he's not. there. He's got a knife on Biff Tannen's gut. <laughs> so they go. Uh, everybody goes off to have their day. It's Halloween day. Uh, yep. You know, yeah. you start the day off with some domestic violence, which is the way to, you know, that's going to put a it fucking was, spring in everybody's dude, step. Dude, <laughs> it was the 90s. <laughs> Okay. Some verbal assault. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Uh, nice. The kids goes to school. He meets up with his girlfriend. Um, yeah, she's just a real dead meat. Oh, uh, they're, they're all going to the same uh, Haddonfield Junior College. Yikes. Fake. <laughs> F- I hate when these things... Wait, did you just say this fake town's fake college is fake? No, it's just... It's one of those things where, like, when you are doing sequel after sequel and, like, 
you're trying to expand the universe, and it's like, well, of course Haddonfield would have a junior college. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> they should at least call it like the, you know, the county's community college. Yeah, or like you know, Crystal Lake High or some Maybe stupid shit. Maybe it just shit. has a fucking job. Like, I care. No, there should be like a, uh, a, a technical institute oh, where all God. these mechanics go, where <laughs> Michael can get those mechanic jumpsuits yes. at the beginning of every movie. Right, That's right, next, right next door to the Max Mask Factory. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! You you graduated from Haddonfield Junior College, and now you're going to work over at the Haddonfield Mask Factory, huh? <laughs> you got two options: the Mask Factory or the Mechanics Place. Oh, dude, maybe maybe it's uh, Silver Shamrock opens up a factory. Oh, right? that I could like that be idea. tie it right back in. I think they're trying to. I think they. I you know the whole Celtic thing and yeah, the rooms. I would say, yeah. I think they're trying to tie it into the third one, kind of. Yes, yeah, I would agree with that. Which is fuck all pointless. Exactly, because everyone knows runes are inherent to Norse mythology and That's they right. should be using Norse magic. Well, they also say Sam, the only person in the entire six movies of, of, of the first Halloween where Samhain keeps coming up. Even Donald Pleasance calls it Sam Hain. You like think it's he'd some, be classy <laughs> enough to get it right. Like it's like some guy in your biology class. <laughs> uh, Mr. Hain, are we paying attention? Someone wake up Mr. Hain. <laughs> It's the festival of Sam Hain. It's his birthday. Mr. Hain, you do not own that desk. Stop writing on it. <laughs> um, so uh, they go there. Um, uh, uh, Donald Pleasance goes to see the, the, the hospital there. Right. Yeah. And at, at this point, uh, Tommy Doyle goes to uh, the bus station because that's where he thought the lady was. He finds this trail of blood. I mean, this bus station. <laughs> Dude. I don't know what this janitor's up to, but he's doing a bad job. What, what are you talking about? Just the janitor. This bus station in Haddonfield is open for business. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at you, fucking ticket clerk. Yep. I'm looking at you. All the bus drivers that See are coming See something, through. say something. A trail of blood that leads to the bathroom. A, a pool of it in one of the fucking faucets. Oh, I forget. We, we, we forgot to mention that uh, Jamie the night before, oh. uh, she go, after she makes the call, she goes, Michael, Michael meets her at the bus station. She hides the baby she goes to a farmhouse and gets impaled on a, on a uh, corn thresher yeah. yes and then corn, he, thresher. corn thresher we were then looking for corn the- thresher <laughs> <laughs> do you hear about this i worded it wrong do you hear, <laughs> you hear, you hear about this <laughs> this, uh, uh, this young girl got uh, impaled on a corn thresher <laughs> hear about this he uh, left it turned on <laughs> which is fucking brutal by the way yeah, yeah. and not in the producer's cut producer's cut cut in he stabs her in the gut and she lives and they oh. take her to a hospital where she's only later assassinated by the man in black. The dude yeah. comes into the room right. and shoots her in the head like fucking Don Corleone. Okay, point theatrical. Yeah. Oh, big time. Point theatrical so, so, on that one. And, and the hat man is also the one shown to be telling those kids to kill their family, right? Yeah, and somehow that dude's like the universe's greatest ventriloquist because he's throwing that voice all over that this house. This is like he's the in, shadow people. He is, and yes. he's, he's in at the end of five. He's the one that rescues Michael Myers, and you're like, ooh, that's going to get paid off in six years in, in a movie that doesn't have anything to do with this movie. <laughs> Can't wait for that to happen. Oh, going to hold my breath for that sequel. <laughs> they should have just made it like his, 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 his friend who's like a cowboy slasher. <laughs> like, I heard about your crimes out west and i was <laughs> i blew into this town dude it would have been I great people up on veterans day <laughs> not, not 14 <laughs> days later remember your veterans <laughs> what a, about uh the what's the dude's name from uh jason goes to hell duke something Oh, oh, the the, the, the bounty the hunter. hunter. That, oh, yeah, it should have been that guy. I, Duke, it, that character. It was very similar, right? I, that's what I thought they were going when they when they showed that guy springing them out. One thing uh, that I read on the IMDb Tribune because uh, this is a, a copious trivia. Oh, oh you'll board. spend a good thirty minutes reading. And is this that thing. actually might might have been in the Wikipedia Gazette? It's uh, apparently uh, Donald Pleasance in an interview with Fangoria magazine. Nice, dude. Yeah. Fango exclusive. <laughs> really was touting the script for part six. Mm. Thought it was going to be great. One of the best. Best movies he's ever done. I just like the idea of like Donald Pleasant's always talking to fan. Oh, it's up my good friends at Fangoria magazine. Come on in. Oh, yeah. hello, Alex and David. <laughs> he knows where his bread is buttered. Oh, yeah. totally. Well, that's why he's doing the sixth Halloween movie. <laughs> slash, how you doing? Slash. Oh yeah, they're photographers. Slash. 
Oh, well, I'll, yes, I'll take a picture in front of this severed head. <laughs> oh, God. I'm a oh, classically oh. trained actor. How fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me, right next to a dead doll of me. <laughs> God, you just feel so fucking bad for him sometimes. I mean, he wasn't like... All right, I'll take a picture with Robert Englund. Ew. <laughs> oh, ew. Englund. <laughs> Robert, could you just take it down a notch with the Axe body spray? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I can see that happening. What You're covered mean? in hot plastic all day. You got to spray yourself down with something. He finds this baby in a dumpster, and he's like, oh, I'm crazy. I'm going to call you Steven. And I'm like, okay. That, Steven, <laughs> that name suits you. I was like, are you going to eat this baby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what else would you call a dumpster baby? <laughs> uh, that's actually true. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So, yeah, now he's just in possession of this child, by the way. He takes it back to the boarding house he lives <laughs> he's in. He's just walking around with this baby. He goes to a hospital. He's like, my baby's sick, man. And this <laughs> lady's like, I'm going to call security. That scene makes no sense because I'm like, what's the end game here? Like, he Secu- kind of... Security never comes. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> it's, I think it's one of the problems with ha- Haddonfield. <laughs> yeah. whatever, whatever this town's Haddonfield. name. Haddonfield. Haddonfield. Yeah. Haddonfield the is the, uh, the, the, the guy that runs the delicatessen in Haddonfield. <laughs> Haddonfeld is the uh, horror movie about nothing. (laughs) 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 Michael, he's like the Kramer. He comes in. I like that idea. (laughs) Oh, nice. Maybe Dahmer's George. (laughs) Michael, I'm sick and tired of you coming in here and killing all of my girlfriends. You get the hell out of here. (laughs) Stop eating all my girlfriend's heads. (laughs) I'd watch that. I would watch that. Watch that. <laughs> Jerry, you got you got to go pick up uh, her. I left I left brains in her apartment. <laughs> <laughs> if you've tasted the brains, why do you need them? <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Yeah. Now, I thought the. I mean, it doesn't matter, but I thought that the uh, the security guards do chase him out of there because he runs into Doctor. It's one of those like, oh, Doctor Loomis, what yes. are you doing yes. here? Yes. You know, and he's like. Who are you, friend? Did I meet you at Fangoria Con 1991? He's responding like he's an NPC in an RPG. <laughs> yes, he does. You're... Do you want to see my wares or do you have something for me? <laughs> oh, you're going to need more coins than that. <laughs> this is a pricey potion, traveler. He goes, he goes away, comes back. Who are you, friend? This is a pricey <laughs> potion travel. Like, oh, fuck, this guy's got nothing new to tell me. <laughs> fuck you, Donald Pleasant. Well, I guess I'll talk to the mushroom guy. <laughs> I'll see you at the festival tonight. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you at the festival. <laughs> well, that's, it's such horseshit. He's like, he's like, oh, meet me tonight at the campus rally at 9 o'clock. And he's like, all right, party on, dudes. <laughs> I was going there anyway. Who else is going to bring the beer bong? Listen, th- now, you're, you're a kid with a baby you found. <laughs> yes. yep. This is an adult doctor that you know of. <laughs> sure, Give know. the baby to him. But he Honestly. doesn't because he sassed that fucking counter lady and she called security on Paul him. Paul Rudd would be better off putting this baby in the next garbage he finds it. Yep. I mean, like, yep. really, mm. he's a crazy guy. He lives in a rooming house. Yeah. Well, we, with what winds up happening, yeah, totally. That baby has a, quite Dude, the wild ride. Just put it in, like, a little, like, bed thing and throw it in a river. Yeah, yeah. The, it'll get caught in the reeds. It'll um, be yeah, fine. Yeah, American Moses. Have you learned nothing from the cobble pots? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow, you know what? Eviscerating point. <laughs> Who knows what would happen to that baby? So we come back. He's like, I'll meet you at the cool party. See you at the moon tower, bro. <laughs> oh, don't wear your better than Ezra t shirt. I'm wearing mine. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> these, these horror girls always get younger. And I stay the same. No, I get older. (laughs) (laughs) Um, These final girls. Yeah, there we go. We cut to back to the Myers house and the mother who is, by the way, uh, she's in True Grit. uh, 
uh, Kim Darby. Kim, Kim Darby. Darby. And yes. wait, we're talking about the newer one, not the John Wayne one. No, the, the John, John Wayne, Wayne one. one. Oh. Yeah, she, she's she's the uh, the, the Haley Seinfeld. Yeah. One. Oh, uh, but she's more importantly the uh, professor in Teen Wolf too. In case you're wondering. Oh. Yes, oh. that's right. And I was, was wondering. We're talking about the MTV show, and uh, oh, oh wait, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're talking about previous episode Teen Wolf two, two right? Yeah. Um, but two O's. So he. <laughs> Uh, she's like preparing the house for her abusive husband, and she's like, "Oh, oh, that's right." Doctor Lewis comes here, and it, yep. he, he goes. He, he he has a big day of it. He goes to her <laughs> house, and he's like, he breaks in. She's it, she's like doing laundry. He's like, "Hello, I would like to talk to you about the Church of Michael Myers." <laughs> so, it's so awesome. Like she like flat out shits her pants, and he's like, "Oh, hello, Mrs. Strode. How are you doing?" <laughs> she's like crying like <laughs> staring at this scarred old man he tells her uh the thing that everybody in the town knows that she's in the, the strode house which oh that's is, why everyone keeps looking at me at the grocery store i'm sorry the, the michael myers house also they're the strodes this happened to their like it's in the family <laughs> yeah this is clearly a family that doesn't talk about much at the holidays now, what is this father doing is it's like a dog tooth situation <laughs> <laughs> It might be. Oh, my God. I'm going to force my family to live in this fucking murder house as a weird social experiment. He's just burning letters from the outside in the backyard. Exactly. Yes, that cat is a monster. <laughs> and also, someone might come to the door and murder us all. We'll see what happens. All of a, all of a sudden, the little kid like sees an airplane. He's like, bah, bah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> that would be awesome. So, and he has to keep bringing people. Like, the son starts getting old enough, so he starts bringing this girl in from the, the community college to have sex with him secretly. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's he, so he doesn't start having sex with the family members because he has no idea what's going on. It's about, about time Dad hooked you up, man. <laughs> By the way, gentle listeners, watch Dog Tooth. Yes. So um, he he tells her the scoop. She calls her husband. She's like, I can't believe you put us in this murder house. I'm going to go stay anywhere else for Halloween for at least one day on Halloween, which makes a good deal of sense. I'm taking the kids. You should come with us. And he's like, ah, shit, come on. Oh, by the way, uh, a nice homage to the mother and father of the Halloween franchise. Oh, this, this. this mother oh. and father ca- cami- uh, combo is Deborah and John for Deborah Hill and John Carpenter. God. I'm sure John Carpenter's like, thanks for making me the abusive <laughs> asshole husband. Yeah, exactly right. The, oh, thanks for making God. me ho- the Halloween universe is Biff Tannen. I really well, appreciate that. it's accurate. So he <laughs> starts drinking at work, and she winds up um, getting killed by Michael Myers, In, weird enough. This is the dumbest, most frustrating kill of the movie, because, like, he shows up in the house, and she's like, ah, ah, ah! <laughs> I mean, she's, she's terrible at acting scared, and then, like, she runs out of her own house, and, like, moves away. Of course, laundry is on, like, a, dr- a drying line thing sure. or whatever. She moves aside a sheet, and there's a fence, and she's like, shocked at the appearance of this fence. She's yeah. like, where did that fence come from? <laughs> and then she turns around and falls over and her glasses fall off and she's getting like crushed by sheets. And I'm like, crushed by sheets? She can't get away from these sheets that are just covering her. This laundry is consuming her. And I'm like, you live here. Yep. You know how to get out of your own backyard. Um, it's a laundry line. It's not Akira. Like, the thing isn't going to tangle itself. Stop it. Watching, Watching this woman up. struggle at a slow pace, by the way, because any kind of, like, action choreography in this movie Was, is terrible. Wasn't there a cool laundry scene in the uh, original? Like, there was a clothing line. There, he's, like, standing behind standing it. But like, by yeah, it, yeah, exactly. And I'm not sure if he's... De- oh, so, yeah, I guess that's another... Well, I oh, guess... great. That's maybe, great. Yeah, another, just, you know what, Chris? Nod. It's another brilliant nod. Oh, I think there's also a laundry sequence in Friday the 13th Part 5? Uh, yeah, maybe it's Part 5. One, one of them there, movies. There's a good the laundry sequence in Batman Forever, which I really appreciate. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, yeah when, when, he, they, when he's doing karate laundry. Oh, remember, remember that? Does, he's got a laundry machine, though, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah. man, these rich kids. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she gets murdered. Um, and this is the beginning of, like, everyone in the Strode house doesn't give a shit about anybody. Like, no one's talking to anyone. And, uh, I, I mean, we're, we're, in a pre-cell pre-cell phone. Yeah, we're yeah. in a pre We're not texting each other, how's your day going? Right. But, like, nobody knows. Like, uh, uh, what's-her-face comes home? Uh, Kara. Kara, who's the mother of Danny. 
comes home from school and she's like, "Ah, oh, where's my mom? Hey, mom, you home? Want to make a sandwich or whatever?" And like, there's this long shot of like, we don't know what's going on, and like, right. you're walking up and down the stairs, mm-hmm. and like, I kind of wanted to cut to. In, she goes in her room and Michael Myers is just jerking off on her bed. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that? Oh, you're early. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I gotta do the sound effects in the set. Oh, I see. <laughs> I, that, that's I, Michael Myers jer- uh, jerking off. I was gonna be eerily in the closet, but I do. I usually do this first. <laughs> you're uh, you're really early <laughs> oh no i looked at the wrong day on your schedule you posted on the fridge oh i thought today was thursday well look you left out a picture of your dead dog what do you think of <laughs> <laughs> well hot and bothered by this dead dog <laughs> but that doesn't happen no, no she goes in and actually creepier for her it's speaking of jerking off it's fucking paul rudd hanging out with her son mm-hmm. in just in this I'm room and like off. oh you <laughs> the well. son is sitting on one side of the bed playing with a dinosaur paul rudd is on the other side of the bed playing with a baby like yeah. he's holding the baby and it's like dude if you walked into your room and there's the known neighborhood weirdo who stares at you from his boarding house window yep. like her reaction is so not appropriate she's like so, scream it should what, be a- what are you doing here like that's she's oh you she should be screaming I would scream especially, if I, sure. especially since he was videotaping you get naked yes exactly and at like that so moment he's playing a dumb teenager and most dumb teenagers break the thing of flower that represents a child <laughs> right that's you true. Know, that yeah. that assignment yes. uh-huh. I just think this baby should die in Paul Rudd's care. You know what? <laughs> well, then something would happen in this movie. So it that's, would be uh, different. You'd be it was all a like, radical turn for the <laughs> Halloween. Exactly. Franchise. You're, you're like, you're like, when's Michael Myers gonna kill that baby? Oh wait, Paul Rudd did. <laughs> oh, negligence <laughs> killed that yeah, baby. Well, Weird. that's the same thing in the in the. Sorry to keep harping on it, but in the producer's cut, when the other guy kills Jamie, I'm like. That's for Michael Myers to do. Why did this dude just shoot someone in the head? <laughs> wrong movie. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I went to the wrong movie. Uh, <laughs> so this Wait. movie, this franchise doesn't have assassinations. Is it, this is not an assault on Precinct Thirteen <laughs> sequel. <laughs> I'm on the wrong John Carpenter verse. I asked for Vanilla Swirl. Blammo. Blammo. Oof. Uh, yeah. So they're like, uh, Tommy's like, look, I'm here because. By the way, you live in the Myers house. It's like, say what? Like, yeah, you really do. Do we even get the explanation, though? Isn't isn't it just more of like a come with me if you want to live kind of thing? Yeah, she's like, hey, come. The safest place in the world is across the street. Yeah, and she's just like, (laughs) we're supposed to stay here. You don't even see him being like, here's what's going down. Yeah. When we do finally get to Paul Rudd's bedroom, we get to see the coolest thing in this movie by far. Oh, please. He the has, Macintosh stone tablet? No. <laughs> in Above his bed, he has a poster yeah. of Vim Vendor's oh. The American Friend. Does he really? I lost my fucking brain. <laughs> my mind flew out of my head. I, I watched this it's movie twice in 24 hours. It's partially obscured by something, but you can see, you know, Vim Vendor's, oh, and you can wow. see part of the title. And That's awesome. For uh, people at home listening who don't know what that is, it's a great movie starring Dennis Hopper and yeah. Bruno Gantz, who you mm-hmm. only know from those Hitler videos. <laughs> <It's got> a, <laughs> oh, oh, he's playing Hitler in the, in the, uh, the, the bunker. Yeah. The downfall the meme. Down, yeah, right, yeah, right, right, exactly. right, right, right. Yeah, uh, he, turns out he's also an actor. Yeah, yeah. he's been in quite a lot. Turns out he's a good actor. Yes. Yeah, that's right. I didn't notice it because it was obscured by all his Homeland-esque Michael Myers conspiracy conspiracy theory <laughs> horse shit that's all over his room. Yeah, and he sits there down and he's like, oh man, the festival of Sam Hain, man, it's coming up. And we're talking about like this fucking eye of thorn or whatever the shit, and right. he's he's brought like constellations Got into it. Some crazy fucking program on his computer. Oh, of course his computer program. Able to bring mm. all these stupid fucking symbols. Mind sweep. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I was playing Minesweep, and I actually cleared this field. And when I did, I figured out the Curse of Thorn. I touched a bomb. And the, cur- <laughs> the Curse of Thorn is basically, I don't know, like, I don't know. It's a curse from Celtic lands. It's he's got to kill his whole family. He's yeah. like the, like, perpetrator. Like, he is, he is the evil one. He's cursed. Like, this is what's stupid about all this is, like, they're making it so, like, he's cursed. So all of a sudden, he's not this, like embodiment of pure evil weird ambiguous thing that they do in the first the movie shape. yeah like now he's just this poor guy that got a curse put on him by this evil doctor 
Feel bad for him. He's yeah. cr- fuck you, dude. This guy's a madman. A killing machine. A killing machine. Like, don't try to explain it away as he's some victim. That's it's the thing I've always hated about this. You know, Horse Michael, I, I heard you're you're part of a Celtic curse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh uh, man! So he's like, "All right, you hang out in my creepy ha- rooming house with uh, the creepy rooming house lady, and I'm gonna go meet up uh, at Monster Fest with uh, <laughs> with Donald Pleasant. Monster Fest, Rob Zombie's playing, and uh, what's her face? So they we cut to this festival where in Barry Sims, who's right. a character nobody wanted. This in is nobody the, this gives is a shit. The uh, shock jock, yeah, shock jock is there, and like he, the girl. Uh, the, the brother's girlfriend there is like, oh, we want to, like, I don't, what is her goal? She's like, oh, I want to, like, forget about the curse of Michael Myers. Yeah, this is her whole thing. Is This is like her, I'm a college student and I have to get, like, politically active in something. Junior college. So, <laughs> oh, whoa. Whoa. So she's like, listen, Take I'm... That a, associates. I'm, <laughs> no. I'm on a campaign to uh, bring Halloween back to Haddonfield. She even ropes in, like, you know, it's hurting our economy. Like, businesses are failing because we don't have Halloween. Like, this whole, like, it's our right to really celebrate got Halloween. to say here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's the Kevin Bacon, I guess. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. She is. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, I mean. There's no Halloween here. <laughs> Put that candy corn away. <laughs> Dad, I just want to spook out for one night. <laughs> Get in your room, young lady. <laughs> Anyone see his Campbell's chicken soup uh, commercial? What? Does he play the little kid that turns in, <laughs> that that's the snowman that turns into a little boy? Because <laughs> no, that's sorry. such an old commercial. I, that's like Progresso McDonald's. chicken soup. Like, oh, Progresso has chicken soup now. It's the best chicken soup you'll ever eat. Really? I've never seen that. What? Yes. I have not seen that. I have seen his nude ass in person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it was in a play. Yeah, I was yeah, going to keep oh, telling yeah, yourself I that. that. Okay. I, it, I lived. I lived across from John Lithgow <laughs> one summer. I had a really a, nice camera. Just I was say, in a boarding house one summer. It was a good play. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mr. Siska, aside from that, how was the play? <laughs> uh, well, he had uh, he played a diplomat that had an affinity for sex with uh, Russian teens or some such. Oh, that's Ooh. cool. Yeah. So the shock. It was good. <laughs> it was good. Uh, it was nice. <laughs> You're talking about the play, right? The play was nice. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. I'm <laughs> still not sure he's just talking about looking across the street at Lithgow's bedroom. <laughs> I'm at the theater. <laughs> I, I, All I, these Russian teenagers. I wish I could afford to live adjacent to his bedroom. <laughs> um, the shock jock. The, the shock. shock jock is like, oh, you know, she's trying to use the shock jock to further her cause. The shock jock that says something Barts. vaguely, you know, he's like, oh, you wear crotchless panties and bark like a dog. Aruga. Oh, he got her again. <laughs> That Barry Sims, you coyote. <laughs> Stands up, slow clap. <laughs> I like the idea, like, uh, because uh, Paul Rudd does run. He's like, Dr. Loomis, there's a baby. You got to come. He's like, right away, Tommy. He's like, no, no, wait. He's going to, fa- the vomit guy is coming up next. He's going to vomit on the front row. He can make himself do it on cue. Can you imagine? Here comes Vinny the Vomitorium. <laughs> that, that little person's going to have sex with a woman. <laughs> I, can't, I can't leave now. Could you imagine? <laughs> the dog is going to eat peanut butter off of what? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Just a minute, Tommy. I know there's a madman on the rampage, but I have to get my t shirt signed. <laughs> so uh, he's like, uh, in the course of this interview, Barry Sims finds out that she, uh, that her boyfriend lives at the Myers house. He's like, oh, that's where we're going to, that's where we're going to record the rest of the show. And like, he starts calling up his agent. Well, they also say no, but yes. he's like, no, no, <laughs> it's happening. It. <laughs> and I have to, I got to put a clock on oh, something right now. Uh-oh. He says, <laughs> you know, like, where's your house? And the kid, the kid, Tim, who is finding out on the air what the yes. situation, she says it and he's like, wait, what? I, I live in, I, I live, live in the what? what? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so 
He's like, how far away is your house? And he's like, a half mile. And Barry Sim says, okay, I will be there in five minutes. <laughs> Just like, keep that in mind. Okay. So, so Barry Sims is in the parking lot of this fucking festival. All right, put up the ticking clock on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and he's talking shit to his agent. He's like, oh, man, we can't, can't wait to record the rest of this at that pussy Michael Myers' house. And like, where do you get pussy from? Like, you know, like... Yeah. Mm. Like, what, have you killed more people? Is that what you're trying to say, Barry Sims? <laughs> Like asshole, sure. Like he's yeah. a dick. I, I I don't like Michael dick Myers. Maniac. <laughs> maniac. Yeah, he's not a pussy. <laughs> oh, he's emasculating Michael Myers. <laughs> My two worlds are colliding. I don't know what to do with this. Oh, oh do me next. <laughs> Riff away. <laughs> Oh, he got me good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Eviscerated by Barry Sim. That cut to the core, Barry. <laughs> Too deep, Barry. <laughs> Too deep. We only roast the ones we love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't even know. So, yeah, I, I Barry gets killed. He gets like hung in a tree or something. That's well, he a- gets into a van, and uh-huh. this is—it's one of these useless things. When you're watching different cuts of movies, you're like, "What, what does it matter? Why yeah. did you cut this out?" Theatrical, he gets in the, in his van, and mm-hmm. Michael Myers is in there, and he gets murdered because because he's just got an affinity for cars. And he's just <laughs> checking out the latest. It's, that's right, the, the latest creep van that he's going to steal. Is this a Corolla? Or- <laughs> but in the producer's cut, he gets in the car, and the camera it takes a quarter of a second. Just pans to the left, and you see that it's a Smith's Grove van. Oh, okay. And you're like, oh shit, here it comes. Like, it doesn't matter either way, but like, why are you cutting out what? interesting wait, details? Wait, so the DJ's van is from the sanitarium. No, no, no. The DJ gets in the wrong car. Oh, is, okay. Is the situation. I thought it was like Dr. Loomis is just like, I'm going to put you on the payroll. <laughs> <laughs> I love I'll, you. So come much. work for me, Barry. Oh, he, he needs someone to drive him around. I'll do it, Barry. I'll do it. <laughs> I've got a weekend gig driving Barry around. Because you see like earlier in the movie a van with like the Barry Sims poster on it and it's like, it's like the Blues Brothers. He's like, yeah. Barry Sims program tonight at the community college or whatever. And Why? T- for the 50 people who care. <laughs> yeah. And he does something where he's like, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming tonight. I can feel that. I'm just, I'm laughing. That's, oh, that's yeah. Nice. That's I'm laughing. One. So he winds up, he's dead. Um, we come, the girl, uh, the girl and the guy go back to the to the Strode house. Oh, by the way, uh, we're cutting out the the dad's death, which is the best death of the movie. Oh, yes, oh right. Is. He comes home and he starts drinking more, and he's looking for us. Like, Deborah, where's dinner? You know, he's doing that oh, thing. God, Five yeah. across the eyes. If I don't see a steak <laughs> soon, he goes downstairs. He gets killed by Michael Myers. Oh, but yeah. he's drinking, and he's like, Oh, I guess the boogeyman <laughs> in the house is <laughs> talking. This fucking is also shit. another laundry sequence. Now there's a beaten up <laughs> yeah. laundry yes. machine that's on for some reason and now was anybody That's else lures him to the basement was anybody else faked out by this so like biff tannen opens this washer and there's like bloody sheets in it weren't you expecting the mother to be like stuffed in there i thought so too wouldn't I, that I, have been something I but why is michael myers a... doing laundry <laughs> <laughs> there, there should be a bloody jumpsuit in there <laughs> just another gas station attendance jumper uh, permanent press <laughs> white <laughs> and colors um Humble, dry, low. I don't know. I I can tell you, Michael Myers would not use the delicate setting. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's always the 10. Well, you don't need it, what with all the jumpsuits with holes in them. I mean, but I I will say, as opposed to killing myself in a horror movie, I want to be the drunk lout that is talking shit right before he gets killed. Oh, totally. Because that guy's got to be. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I will. Yeah, our next live show. <laughs> <laughs> come, October 21st, come on out. Oh, man, have you got murdered that night? It's, it's like the Scream opening two. of Scream 2. <laughs> it's, it's all part of the show, folks. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, don't worry. That's what we'll say. It's the only time I've ever been compared to Omar Epps. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he just kills this dude. He 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 starts shocking him, right? Like yeah. he puts up against the laundry machine. He uses like a live wire, and his head explodes, <laughs> which is awesome. Like, and point what? point theatrical. That's cut out of the producer's cut. I screamed in my house when that happened. Not <laughs> not that I was afraid. Or? No, no, no. It was a what? <laughs> This is I couldn't so ridiculous. It. Why? <laughs> and what's awesome is there's definitely some shots where you're like, that's a puppet of this guy. Yeah. That's a puppet of this guy, which they keep in the producer's cut. And I was like, why is it a puppet? Because in that one, he just kind of like slumps over like, oh, I got electrocuted and yeah. he dies. 
And I was like, why was there a puppet in there? And then you watch that, and you're like, oh, because he gets scannered. <laughs> and um, uh, across the... Sh- so later they come in. Uh, they think Barry's on his way. Five and, minutes! And the power is cut. And they're like, oh, let's light some candles and fuck. Five fucking minutes! <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Come on! You, you got a whole radio show coming, and this guy's a shock jock. And He's going to bring imagine? it up on the air. Can you imagine? This shock jock gets there. And he catches you having sex. It's all he's going to be roasting you about for the rest of the night. But also, when he doesn't get there, and, you know, that's just like a brief commercial break, who's doing the show? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Lubis jumps in. <laughs> oh, my God. It's my moment in the sun. <laughs> Baba Barry, Baba Barry. <laughs> Hosting the Barry Sims show. <laughs> Sitting in for the immortal Barry Sims. <laughs> it's like when David Letterman filled in for Johnny. Okay, what are you wearing, sweetheart? <laughs> Sounds sexy. This is Loose Loomis. <laughs> Loose Loomis. Ew. <laughs> Paul Red's like, come on, we gotta go. We gotta- no, no, one more minute. I have a small Johnson as well. (laughs) Would you like to see my horribly scarred chest? (laughs) I'm Johnson. um, It's been scarred. My favorite cut in any movie is we cut back to... um, So they're about to have sex. We cut back to Paul Rudd and uh, Loomis. They're in the, the parade or whatever. And he's like... Where's the baby, Tommy? Where's the baby? And they cut from <laughs> where's the baby to them literally having sex. <laughs> <laughs> it's is, on its way. <laughs> um, and this other uh, Kara is across the street. It's like, you know, I probably should call home because this guy told I'm staying here because I know yeah. that my whole family's in danger. And should, it's been hours. I should give maybe a shit about anybody. And, like, I know you hate your dad, and he punched you in the face at the breakfast table. That but guy s- can go. Sure. Yeah, but see what mom's up to. The brothers seem... They were tight, right? Oh, yeah. Where's Tim? Fine. What's Tim yeah. doing? She does notice there's a light on. Yeah. So they... Uh, of course, after sex, you have to go take a, sh- a shower immediately. Oh, you got to wash it right off. Like, off. like within seconds, you need to do that. <laughs> and I think it's a thing because he's got some line where he's like, I got to stay fresh. And I was like, for Barry Sims? Who- and this shit house? <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you staying fresh for? You just fucked in a shithole mass murderer's house. If I, if I just had sex with somebody and they took a shower immediately and they weren't going to work, which is already pro, uh, scheduled, I'd be like, okay, fuck you too. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I gotta like, wash you right off of me, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, boy. So you're saying he got <laughs> right out of bed <laughs> after coming and showered you right off, baby? <laughs> that sounds like a real loser. <laughs> Drop the zero and get with the hero. I, Loose Loomis, would <laughs> revel in your essence. Ew, Loose Loomis. Hey, Fred, do we have an appropriate drop to play for that? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Why don't you masturbate on the phone? <laughs> That's why they call me the king of all media. <laughs> We're listening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, man. So he gets killed kind of, he gets his throat slit uh, kind of slowly, which is not a little uncomfortable for my taste. It's weird, but you know, this dude should have been tipped off, and I'll tell you why. He gets out of the shower and he's like, hey, babe, just give me a towel. I'm freezing. I was yeah. like, first of all, no, you're not. You just turned off the shower. I can see the steam everywhere. Yeah. Second, when someone then, like, immediately hands yeah. you a towel and he's got the Mark of Thorn <laughs> tattoo on his wrist and it's clearly a dude in a gas station attendant's jumpsuit. Also, the smell of rot and swamp. Oh, oh there's rot swamp. That's a great point. Michael Myers must smell like shit. It's yes. not like, oh, I don't know he's in the room. Like, this guy's never showered. In no, the beginning totally. of the fifth, he's he never just... wiped either. <laughs> That was part of the psychosis. Yeah. <laughs> he killed he tried to kill his whole family and he didn't wipe his ass. Yeah. If you that's when you jump in the shower oh after Michael, you kill your family. Maybe you should try wiping your <laughs> ass. Hang up on that loser. Hang up on him. Oh I got him good. Oh now I'm sitting on the Sibian. <laughs> oh God. Now I know what all the fuss is about. <laughs> 
Uh, uh, stupid. Okay. Um, <laughs> so he gets killed. Uh, and then the girl gets killed and yeah. the uh, uh, Kara across the way. It's like, oh my god. Uh, and then Danny's getting like some story by this old lady that's running the rooming house. Which is something. No, this is like when Danny me. walks across the street. She's like, can you believe those people got murdered? <laughs> oh, where's my son? Oh, he's walking across to the murder house? Yeah, and she goes in, and she's taking her time going. Like, if your son is going into a murder house, you have to be screaming, running around, trying oh, yeah. to find this kid. She's like, Danny, hey, hey, Danny, get back here. Don't make me come up there. Are you dead? See, if you did, I, I won't go up there. You're so grounded. Stomp twice for dead. <laughs> so she goes up there with like a fireplace poker and whatnot. Uh, Michael Myers takes a tumble down the stairs at this point. It's is, a great fall. It's He's down for the count for a while. <laughs> I mean, usually it's like... You got to shoot these monsters in the face. I mean, this is just a hard <laughs> fall down the stairs. Took a spill. He did. <laughs> a real wipeout. Yeah, it's a big woof at the end of that Joe, one. Joe Pesci took more at home alone, to be quite honest. <laughs> That's true. Maybe he had the curse of Thorn. <laughs> well, they kept getting, <laughs> they kept yeah, getting back up, too. <laughs> yeah. Those dudes should have been long dead in that movie. Uh-huh. Yeah, there shouldn't have been a sequel. That's how you rob that many suburban homes in Chicago is uh, <laughs> it's true. Irish curses. <laughs> <laughs> Why doesn't anyone ever cut off fucking Michael Myers' head? You know what? Let's just see what that looks like for a while. He's down. Let's just start. Uh, well, use use yeah. a serrated blade and Stay go for it. Stay tuned for Halloween H2O. Oh, okay. Which then they immediately retract. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit of a dupe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so... Um, but seriously, though, get down with a hacksaw and cut these people's heads yeah, off. Yeah, d- d- please. They go across the street. There's some Michael Myers, Tom Fuller. He gets up. He follows them. They go across the street, and wouldn't you know it, Wynn, who's been set up in one fucking scene in the theatrical <laughs> cut, is there with all these uh, Irish goons, I guess. In, in, in robes, you know, part of a, I guess, a, a black mask, they call it. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Oh, that was Johnny Depp was there? With his weird blue eyes, <laughs> yes, with stupid haircut, uh-huh. and Southie. It, it that was, movie sucks. It was, it was, it was him bad. from Black Mass and him from The Ninth Gate, both. Uh, <laughs> I'm a miserable book collector. I'm a miserable Irish mobster. Let's, let's talk about hairstyles. Somehow I'm in movies. And let's bring back the devil <laughs> in both of the movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, she's about to get kidnapped. She runs, she takes a, a, a swan dive out the window. It's this is cool. the most gleeful I've seen someone jump through a glass window. And I mean, it is just like, it's hard. Talk about tumbles. So everybody gets kidnapped, and this is when the, the cuts really diverge, is what I understand. This is, this right. is when so, I cut yeah. to Twitter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Goodbye, so movie. Let's, we'll, I will stick on the, the theatrical cut. So uh, she wakes up in a hospital room. Uh, it looks like the same hospital room that Jamie might have been in or something thereabouts. I mean, we're the back same, at like, Smith's basically. Grove. It's yeah. a poorly yeah. lit mental hospital. There's two people working there again. Uh, and, and apparently no, um, uh, like, other patients locked no, up no, there. No, 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 no. no. Is this place out of business? Is that why he's trying it to bring Loomis back? Be. It's fucking oh, they would have been farm. closed. I mean, do that's, think, do that's think, a cool thing. It's like all the other boogeymen recovered. Yeah, I mean, like he's the last one. Now. He's got to be. That would be a cool thing, though. If, like, here's the fucking sixth movie of this shit. Like, we got to go back there. Oh, it's been abandoned for years. That's creepy and spooky. Yeah. And it legitimizes the fact that the set design of this movie looks like a fucking tool video. Yeah, like, it does. <laughs> it really does. Uh, and uh, Paul Rudd and Loomis are outside the house. They wake up. They get drugged. And Loomis is like, I know who's playing the game. And I know where he wants to play it. Oh, man. Just get on with it, Pleasance. <laughs> so they get, <laughs> they get there. And, like, basically, uh, they wind up... Um, uh, um, Loomis confronts Wynn in his office. And there's this scene, uh, in the scene that I saw, the theatrical cut, wherein uh, basically, like, Wynn is like, oh, it's, it's great. I, don't, I, I kind of don't even know what he says. It's, it's so just, it's so nothing. He's like, well, my plan's almost complete. And you're like, what the? And then, like, a couple of goblins, like, go in and beat him over the head. Goblin yeah. vomit. Well, they're like, oh, we want you to join the cult. And he's like, I clearly wouldn't do that. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Why on earth would you think, what with my track record, it would be this easy to well, convert me? I mean, I figured 
well, you know, your patient, your star patient keeps killing people. <laughs> you're, you're, you're somehow you're somehow involved in this. <laughs> Uh, no, you wait. I'm, you're trying to tell me that you were legitimately failing that much? I thought you were unleashing him on your victims. I thought he was your handler. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone makes mistakes, <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> so he, he I'm gets, just a bad doctor. <laughs> <laughs> My real calling is the FM dial. <laughs> I've forged all my medical certificates. No, Barry. I have the run of the place. (laughs) We could turn this medical hospital into a sick FM radio station. Oh, I've got it. Loose Loomis' Asylum of Freaks (laughs) on the mornings. Man, that's the fucking morning show. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Wow. Dude, yeah. Some some people get dirty in the morning. (laughs) So uh, he gets knocked out, and um, Paul Rudd finds the hallway where she's in. She's yelling. Akira's yelling at this point, and he takes forever to break the door open with a, uh, a, a fire extinguisher. Oh, man. And it's, a, it's like those obnoxiously long family guy gags. Yeah. Like, that's what it feels like. Like, he keeps banging it. Looking back, and Michael Myers is like still coming for him, and he's like, oh, "Okay, bang, bang, bang." Is he still there? Oh, okay. He's really making use of my, what he understands. Mike, I mean, he's he's an expert, so he knows like Michael Myers' time. Oh, he's, he's like, got, Steve, he's got a whole computer program devoted to it. <laughs> he's like, I got forty eight minutes until he gets within arm's reach, <laughs> uh, and you know that's it. What's the deal with he walks into that other room and there's that weird lady there, and she's like. It's too late. And, like, she's been stabbed in the gut and falls over. File that under one of the many scenes and characters that doesn't make any sense it's in either totally cut of this pointless. movie. She's only in the theatrical one. It sure. makes no sense. So uh, they start running around. Uh, they, they lead uh, into a, a, the- an, a, 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 surg- a surgery theater. Right, because Wynn is, like, showing off something to all of these. It's like a team of... Government so and so's evil people, sir. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's still got a bit of a, 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 a mystical vibe, but it is more clinical and well, clerical. Even, like, there's the one dude who still has like the ridiculous druid costume still on. <laughs> and We're not got the, doing that anymore. Yeah, he's like, you can take that off. Halloween's over. <laughs> oh, does he say that? Yeah, yeah that's stupid. Psst, there, Steve. <laughs> This is the reshoot. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing. Oh, we're, we're not doing the Celtic rune thing anymore. You're supposed to just be wearing a suit and a lab coat, <laughs> not dressed up like a druid. See, they're they're witch doctors, <laughs> as in doctors who are witches. I think is what this can be. I see. Yeah, that's what he says. Yeah. And I'm still the worst doctor in this room. <laughs> you, you guys actively kill people with your doctor's degree, but somehow I'm worse. <laughs> you, you may be witch doctors. I'm witch doctors with an H. As in, what am I even doing? <laughs> you little motherfuckers are killers. I make the killers. <laughs> Yeah, he's like he could be king shit if he could have played his. He should have. He should have like gotten in with the cult and take it down from the inside once right. he's like king shit. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Your kills are all on purpose. Mine are all total botch jobs. <laughs> I'm the Frank Drebin of the medical <laughs> profession. He totally is. But he could have played. Yeah, he could, he could have been like. He's like, I'm actually the puppet master. Yeah. <laughs> no one would buy that for a second. Nice oh, try, Loomis. Oh, oh, then I better get out of here. <laughs> Uh, so the uh, Myers goes into a medical theater with a medical machete. Sure, okay, uh, it's sterile. Yeah, show me a doctor <laughs> using this thing. Um, and he just kind of hacks them all up off screen. That's like that was I read on the Tribune that was like a ratings thing. They were like, you can't show all this gore. Put in a strobe light and cut it up real good. Yeah, so that that Great. happens. Great. So Wynn dies off screen, or maybe doesn't die off screen. I don't know. I, I don't think you see him get killed. And he's like apparent, apparently the most important character in this movie. Question mark. He was the know. fucking Phantom Menace. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta show that dude dying. What are you? doing? 
doing making this movie? You teased him in the fifth movie, apparently not really, but like you know, you at least tied that together. Well, they hadn't yet cast Chris's uncle in the role, but like someone was the man in I black. I mean, he was ready to go. <laughs> so you can tell he told you Christmas. They uh, so they're running down this hallway, and there's a lot of T uh, two uh, medic like gates that they uh, they closed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he keeps breaking down, and he pushes. This, it's my favorite death of the movie, and it's oh. so brutal. Is Michael Myers put like because all these doctors die except for one guy is running and he's kind of running with the rest of the group hey can i be in the movie <laughs> hey you guys are the last ones to live right so i'll be with you guys it's yeah like paul rudd the baby the kid and uh kara and this like doctor who's just like can't keep up because he's already been cut <laughs> why, in the stomach why don't you give me the baby that'll, <laughs> yeah. that'll make it harder that'll make it harder for him to kill me let me hold the baby but they lock this guy in with myers and myers pushes this guy's face through the gate yeah, and like cool. just pushes so hard that like the whole gate door just falls mm-hmm. down. Look, look, that dude yeah. is dead. It feels good to do that to someone. <laughs> you can tell. Yeah, well, yeah. L- less said the better. Uh, <laughs> they wind up in some like uh, um, uh, some some bullshit carny freak show where there's all these fetuses in a room and, and covered oh, in green God. goo. Oh, it's like the set of an X Files episode. Yeah, you don't need it. And they're like, oh, it all makes sense now. No, it doesn't. I was. They do a close up on this fetus in this like green tank. And I'm waiting for this thing to be like, how's it going? Yeah, I was, I was waiting with bated breath for yeah, this like, fucking fetus to start talking. That puppet's got to at least turn its head. Maybe not say anything. Maybe they should all just, like, jump out of their little jars and start, like, climbing up Paul Rudd and killing him. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. There are a bunch of little Michael Myers. Mm-hmm. Little it's like the like, uh, cold open to Star Trek Beyond. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> exactly, Chris. <laughs> um, and Myers gets here, and this is when... Paul Rudd uses this green goop like to to sedate Dude, him. Dude, it's, it's the ooze. Yeah, yeah. it's just the right. ooze. So he becomes wait, Michael Myers becomes half rat now or half turtle? <laughs> I think well, it's half turtle. Half well, it's the secret of Haddonfield's ooze. Uh, hey, Joe, Joe, uh, just I mean, for my character, um, what is in those um, those syringes? There? Yeah, whatever you want. Yeah. Um, Ecto cooler? I don't know. Ecto cooler. <laughs> uh, oh, it's uh, it's a big jar. Of shut the fuck up and shoot the scene. About you know, uh, uh, enough. You give, do you give a fuck about this? <laughs> do you give a fuck about it's this? A, I'm asking you this. It's six syringes full of. I want to be home in time for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so he cut, he gets it, and like I mean, like there's a bunch of back and forth cat and mouse where shit that sure. we care about. No, but basically, Paul Rudd beats Michael Myers to death with a pipe. Oh man, it's a real Haddonfield street fight at the end of this movie. <laughs> it's so stupid. I hate this because a, a little wormy. <laughs> Paul Rudd. Paul yeah. Stephen Rudd at this Paul, point. Paul Stephen Rudd. Is Was a- there another Paul Rudd in the Academy? <laughs> what is that about? Is able to kill Michael Myers with a pipe. Yep. Meanwhile, thousands of movies. <laughs> thousands? Of, of, of Two thousand? Him being shot, you know, kicked, punched, yeah. beaten. Hit Nearly with a car. With like beefcakes, too. Like, these are they're yes. big dudes going of, after him. A lot of stuff. Loomis Thank suicide you, bombs him in the second movie, and right. he's still <laughs> dancing around. So the fact that Paul Rudd can, Paul Stephen Rudd can do this is just <laughs> bullshit. Well, I think, I, actually, I, I've cracked the Paul Stephen Rudd thing. He did Clueless and this the same year. So I think he's like, I'll be Paul Rudd for Clueless, <laughs> Paul yeah. Stephen Rudd for that. Whichever one's a better movie, uh, that's what I'm going to be. Oh, wow, that's what decided Ooh, it, smart huh? Move. Yeah. Smart move. Yeah. Yeah, so he just has like a dumb shit eating grin on his face. Like, I beat the thing that's tortured me my whole life. But Gotta go. I do have to say, he's got the right idea. If I was this person, I would be beating his head until it was nothing. He keeps going. There's some jelly coming out, too. He <laughs> knows what to, he, he doesn't stop till he sees jelly. Like, you got to get Hacksaw Jim Duggan to come in here with you. Finish that job. He'll do the full Krieger, you know. Cut them up, put them in different trash cans, yep, yep. in different parts of the town. Mm-hmm. Right, do just, the whole thing, just like they did with William Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, My, uh, Michael Myers on that rack at the end of that movie. Yeah, oh man, that freedom! Was- they sent his head to the Queen of England and his, <laughs> his entrails to the four corners of the. <laughs> what is con- this? <laughs> This is an interesting oh, shit, crowd. Dude, man, Halloween at Buckingham? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, totally. That's what we should, we should have left Illinois at some point. You know, yeah, if we're yeah. looking for oh, different yeah. things to do, let's go to the, the, what, the UK. It, I think only one of the movies takes place outside, and that's um, H2O. H2O takes, takes place takes in California. NorCal. Oh. Nice. 
Um, it's stupid, though. There's a bullshit thing. <laughs> oh, don't worry, it's it stupid. stupid. <laughs> Earlier in the movie, when like we're, we're listening to that idiot's radio show, people are calling in with like... Loose Loomis? No, Barry whatever. Barry yeah, Barry's, Sims. Yeah. He comes on right before Loose Loomis. <laughs> Loose Loomis is the midnight to five slot. <laughs> you know, like Someone calls it a Barry Sims they're doing like Michael Myers conspiracy theories, and he's talking about like, yeah, man, and then Michael Myers got hired by the CIA, and he, uh, he's on the government payroll, and they couldn't control him. And they blasted him into space. And I was like, Jason X? <laughs> yeah. Got like a nice little uh, nod there. Myers in, X. Uh, better movie, insanely. Um, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll say that. Jason and I fucking X, hate yeah, that. That's a better, that's so, a better. so at the end of this, now, Michael Myers is dead, beaten by Little Wormy, Paul Stephen Rudd. And then Loomis decides, I'm not going with you. I've got to... Uh, I've got a show to do. <laughs> They're all in Paul Rudd's hip red Jeep Cherokee that he's got out of nowhere in this <laughs> yeah, movie. It's a Wrangler, but it oh, is. is it? Oh, yeah, you're right, actually. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> but it's, yeah, he's just like, he pulls up to this thing and he's like, come on, man, we're going to go haul ass to Lollapalooza, get in. <laughs> and he's like, I don't get in cars without doors on them. <laughs> But no, he's, he's, he's got some bullshit. Like, I still have some work to do. Miles to go before I sleep or whatever the fuck. What if my cane falls out the door? There's nothing there. I don't get in cars with assholes either. <laughs> By the way, out of curiosity, what the fuck is the point of that baby or that little kid? Why am I here? <laughs> Who I are these people? <laughs> What's the deal with this movie? <laughs> Tell me, Haddonfeld. And then what's fucking so stupid about this, and this is the theatrical cut is the reshot ending because Donald Pleasance passed away. So all this is is he says, I have business to finish. <laughs> They drive My off. Home planet needs. Yeah, totally. yeah. I have to go now. I will say, Haddonfeld. Actually, I'm, I'm casting Haddonfeld now. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, obviously uh, Mike Myers in the Kramer role. It's uh, Loomis in the George role. Perfect. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis as Elaine, and of course Paul Rudd as Jerry. Yes, I, I like it. I think that's accurate. That I was good. in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. You know the name now. <laughs> so you just hear like Donald Pleasant's It's What you all- might have seen as running away was leading, <laughs> making sure it was clear. <laughs> Eric, what kind of name is that for a clown? <laughs> You just hear, like, someone found audio from some movie of Donald Pleasant <laughs> screaming. It's Puma Man, I think. <laughs> is he in Puma Man? He is in Puma nice. Man. Oh, shit. The great Mr. Science Theater. He calls, they call him Puma Man, which is fun. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> and so that's, you just are Puma. to assume that Michael Myers killed him, cut to a jack-o'-lantern getting blown out. That's artistic. It would be great if the car had just <laughs> driven away and then the entire thing exploded. <laughs> 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 it would make as much sense. <laughs> the entire it, asylum. It lights right the fuck up. <laughs> this baby's gonna blow. <laughs> oh, no, no. You get it. It's the end of Casino. <laughs> <laughs> There's one more. <laughs> There's one more chip. <laughs> uh, uh, so the, the producer's cut, Andrew, right. if you don't mind. It's a whole fucking Kali Ma Shakti Day shit where, like, Win is in this cult. The cult is there. They're going to sacrifice this baby and the girl too. I think the girl, the girl's going to be sacrificed. She's also possibly going to be impregnated by Michael Myers. There's a line where the Kara, this character, says, uh, "The baby's yours, isn't it, Michael?" Which insinuates that this man fucked his fucking fifteen year old niece. That hey, you know what? Pretty cool movie. <laughs> well, well, weirder things have happened. So that happens. The sacrifice, <laughs> and, then, and then Michael Myers uh, cuts into a, a rendition of "Great Balls of Fire." <laughs> <laughs> Kiss me, baby. <laughs> they called him the killer. <laughs> Paul, follow, follow that. Paul Stephen Rudd hilariously steals like a druid outfit and like sneaks down there like an Indiana Jones movie, man. Well, this is better because you can't go casual cult. If you're doing cult, go full cult. Yeah, don't tease me with a cult. That cult better have 
literally anything to do with the end of the movie. Yes. I agree with that for sure. And yeah, like the old woman is involved with it. Apparently, according to the Tribune, if you're watching the pan and scan version, when she holds the knife up to them, uh-huh. she's got a little uh, Curse of Thorn tattoo Ooh, oh, on her wow. wrist too. Uh, which, and this is amazing because it's like you're filming this movie to be theatrically released in widescreen. That's a great plot twist. You should frame your fucking shot so you can see the plot twist, you idiots. Yeah, seriously. I want Halloween 7, the old lady. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you something about this, Paul. Um, do you have kids? I do. I have to get home to them. <laughs> you know what? Why don't you fucking write a new script for me, and then I'll do that movie? This look, dude was apparently like rewriting scenes like on the set. Too. Look, Monday is Yikes. Columbus Day. I'm taking that off, and I want to get out of here early so I can really enjoy my weekend. So just fucking wrap this movie up. Uh, and they try to do the sacrifice. It gets broken up because Paul Rudd holds a knife to we- Win's neck or some yeah, nonsense. Like, oh, no. yeah. They escape. Paul Rudd does outright magic at the end of this movie. <laughs> he puts down a bunch of little runes in a, a bunch circle. Of Deku yes. nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, he tricks him and like basically powers down Michael Myers. Uh, when and then he gets the slingshot, <laughs> <laughs> and they get in. They get in the. Then it's the Jeep Cherokee scene, and then uh, you know Jeep Wrangler. Uh, Jeep, I apologize. Oh, I don't know. I just I just know it's not a Cherokee. <laughs> it's it's a trigger for Eric. I right? truly apologize <laughs> to you, you know, and the Jeep Corporation. <laughs> yeah, both real. I, I'm pretty heroes. sure. Yeah, so maybe, he, maybe I'm wrong. It's the Jeep scene, and uh, uh, <laughs> Loomis is like, I have more stuff to do, but in this movie, I'm actually going to do it. <laughs> so he turns around, and he goes, and Michael Myers is laying down. He's about to kill him, I think, right? He's going like, to go to hell tonight. They're going to finish the job. And he's like, Michael, it's over. It's over, Michael. And it's like, dude, the talking cure does not work on this monster. <laughs> yeah. Please. And he takes the mask off, and it's Wynn, and Wynn starts laughing at him, and then the whole thing is like, magically, Donald Pleasance gets the Mark of Thorn curse tattoo on his wrist and starts screaming. And then uh, Michael Myers is actually dressed like the man in black, uh, right? and that's how he gets away, you know, by his work boots. Yeah, his, his work boots and jumpsuit mm. pants that you see. And that's the end of both of those That's both movies. of those movies. A thing I will say the producer's cut has over the theatrical, the producer's cut, they just use John Carpenter's original score through the whole thing. Oh, the wow. Not this fucking fart rock Whee! whammy guitar horse shit. Yeah, I, I don't it. think that the, the score should ever be updated. Like, it should just no. be synth yeah. the whole time. And like, keep giving that musical genius money because yeah. that score is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's like they update it with some fucking whammy bar shit. And it just sounds... I mean, it sounds ripe for 1995. Well, it sure does. So, uh, yeah. It's a wonder that Peter Jackson turned this down, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think, wasn't The Frighteners the same year? Uh, was Frighteners it 99? is 99. Oh, was it later? It's later. Yeah, I think it is that. later. I would have liked to see what that looks like. A Peter Jackson Halloween movie? If somebody gave a shit about Mm -hmm. this movie. A director who knows what he's doing. Oh, you know what it would have been, though? Five five hours long, seven endings. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, and I was going to add on to that list uh, Andy Serkis in a mocap Michael Myers (laughs) costume. I like that idea. I I like that. Let's do that now. (laughs) We should. Just mocap all these serial killers. Mocap it all, man. It worked for Snoke. And then the jack-o'-lantern artistically blows out also. Yeah. Both of these cuts are directed to Donald Pleasant, so he's rolling over in his grave. A dedicated to Donald Pleasant. What did I say? Directed by Donald Oh, Pleasant. pardon me. Yeah, no, it's dedicated because he was dead. He died. Well, he actually died before the reshoot. He died like in February, right. and then yeah. they're like, let's throw the whole movie out. And I thought it was really distasteful that they spelled dedicated D E A T. Well, it's like spookier that way. Yeah, well, yes, come on, I mean, Dimension I, listen, Films. That's just tasteless. I know it's a Halloween movie, <laughs> but come on. Jesus Christ. Uh, would anyone recommend either cut of this? No, it's a, it's a weaker <laughs> point of the, the franchise. It just doesn't make any gosh darn sense. And I mean, the producer's yeah. cut makes more sense. It pays off some of the stuff. But not all of it. Like, yeah. there is a movie here somewhere. I don't know where it is. I mean, complete is do what you're going to do. But like, <laughs> I feel like completists have already done it. Unless yeah, some of I our mean, younger listeners yeah, just get into the talking franchise. To the youth, the youth that there, Eric is right. always. There you know, is. See, Chris, there is a number of youth that the listen. Youths. Yeah, the they, youths. Yeah, they talk to me. 
Um, and, you know, if you want to watch all of them, go right the fuck ahead. This movie sucks. Um, <laughs> this movie, I I had a real struggle watching. Like, I, you know, I can get through pretty boring movies. Mm. This, I was like, at, to quote Eric again, like drifting towards the wall. <laughs> had yeah, you, uh, it begs had, not to be watched. Had you seen it before this? Uh, wh- like when I did the first run of it, like back when I was in like high school, when yeah. I did the first full watch, I'd seen it. I hadn't seen it since. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, this was actually my first time watching this one, mm-hmm. um, and uh, no, <laughs> Strong, I, I no. don't like it. No, it's terrible. I realized I had never actually seen the entirety of the theatrical cut. I'd only seen this movie in whatever form when I got the box set. I'd always avoided it. I'd never seen it. And I was like, oh, producer's cut, that should be cool. I mean, both are terrible. Yeah. Com- completest, like Chris said, do what you're going to do, but hachi machi. Well, it's just totally convoluted and with all the references to the first movie like just watch that again yeah, in please. Movies, please watch that again. watch it a hundred times over. or you know just skip this movie and go on to h2o in your rewatch because you're not going to be lost yeah. no you're not or don't do that either yeah. uh <laughs> we will in case you're like well wh- why do they rank all those halloween movies there's so many Ooh. of them we will be doing that. It's an on-screen that's going to release on Halloween. That's right. Yes. That's exciting. Right, uh, yeah. We're going to do everything, including the Robert Zombies. Robert yes, Zombies? The Robert, Robert Steven Zombie. You know, yes. it's, you know, it's a, a futile exercise, because uh, I think George P. Wilbur plays the shape in this movie, and I was like, I wonder if uh, he played the shape in all of them. Never nope. hit the hyperlink of Michael Myers on IMDb. Oh, no. Fan films? You're going to get besieged with <laughs> fan films. I mean, like, you can't see the forest for the trees for the fan films in this thing. It's disgusting. There should be a different oh, fan man. film page. FF right. IMDb where well, I don't need to look at listen, it. Listen, first of all, fan films have no place in IMDb. I they agree. They have no right? place in fucking society, thank you very much. Although, hey... If you follow me on Twitter or whatever and you know of a Michael Myers versus Predator, <laughs> maybe. maybe send that along. Sure. Why not? And there's a whole bunch of Star Wars ones, right? What? Oh, send those. <laughs> I was going to say, I point. thought you would already be you know, on that. He, him, him slaughtering an Ewok village. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That would be so great. Right? <laughs> I mean, Man. he could go down right to exactly like an ATAT, though. Yeah, I think that's that's how they get him in the end. Just tie his they, feet up, and then they crush his head with two big logs. <laughs> that's Halloween: The Curse of Michael Myers, directed by Joe Chappelle. If you want more We Hate Movies, check out whmpodcast dot com or find us over at Sideshow Network dot TV. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, rate and review the show wherever you get it. We would greatly appreciate it. Hey. Check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash we hate movies. You right. get on there, you get access to things like Animation Damnation, our new podcast on The Nexus, which is a Star Trek show. Uh, Side Order of Sleaze is sort of dancing around. It's, it's back. There's, a, there, there's, a, there's like a 40 minute episode on Ilsa, She Wolf of the SS. That's, that's right. good for Halloween. That's that is, oh, it's frightening as fuck. And that's good for any night. <laughs> and there's a, a newsletter that people seem to like. Right. We just re- released and this Steve, week. what's, the, what's the, the name of that uh, newsletter? It's called The Big Daddy Dispatch. That's right. And on there, you're getting things like future episodes. If you are uh, a subscriber already, you got the October one, baby. You know all of the spectacular. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, Animation Damnation's going up there. Maybe we should just tell the folks what what what, what we're doing for that to get them interested. Maybe they're going to jump on and, and, and uh, that subscribe is, to that uh, Patreon then. Davian Goliath, the Halloween whodunit. Oh, oh God. Kill I, me now. I haven't wow. watched it yet. I'm, yeah. I'm really I, excited. Me neither, but doesn't that sound good, folks? When you... <laughs> 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 Wouldn't you contribute a couple shekels for that one? So if you like the show, you want to support us, you like what we do here, check it out, patreon.com slash we hate movies. Next week, we're going back to my childhood, and I am not excited for this. Oh, it's, we're riffing your home movies. <laughs> it's, <laughs> oh, man, so many sad Christmases. <laughs> it's, it's the Jupins at Wildwood. <laughs> <laughs> That's the short that plays before the feature, we- Ernest Scared Stupid. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. You know, for the longest time, I thought stupid was a person. I didn't get what that title meant. <laughs> Talk about fucking stupid, by the way. You know, I think I thought that, too. I was, I was like, like, who the fuck is stupid was in like, this oh, movie? that weird potato demon's named stupid. <laughs> because. I was like, Jesus Christ, if anyone's going to scare you, it was Ernest P. Worrell.
Hate no, that. none of you were scared by Ernest. I was Steve terrified. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, are you we, we don't speak of him. You were afraid of Ernest. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not afraid. Just unsettled. It's just like a fucking sixty-year-old man looking at you, looking at you with a fisheye lens. It's not not, not <laughs> very flattering for anybody. Oh, I, I will tell you, I was terrified of uh, the demon trolls boogers. Oh, that's great. That yeah. stuff haunted yeah. my dreams. Yeah. More talk of this next week on We Hate Movies. Until then, I'm Andrew Jupin, Steven Seda, Chris Gabin, Eric Siska. Take it easy. <laughs> We all go a little mad sometimes. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? Sometimes. That is what I... Zombies have entered the building. They're at the door. They're coming in. It is time to keep your appointment with the Wicker Man. They're coming to get you, Barbara. One too many movies. Now, Sid, don't you blame the movies. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. What the fuck are you What an excellent day for an exorcism.